Um, this session is about um, data sources for extracellular RNA, and our first talk is from Matt Roth from the Baylor College of Medicine. Um, he's part of the ERCC um, data management group, as am I. So, Matt, please take it away. Okay. Well, great. Uh, well, thank you, Roger, for the invitation to present. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the XRNA Atlas resource, which was developed as part of the ERCC. So uh, Roger and uh, Rob actually covered some nice background, so if they need a little bit of time. Um, as Roger covered, so the ERC is uh, initially launched to understand the basic role of XRNA, so I won't need to cover that. I'm going to focus on the two bottom uh, bullet points. So this data is being generated uh, by the consortium understanding uh, biogenesis and uh, secretion, et cetera, um, using primarily RNA-seq and qPCR. And so the question is, where does this data go? So uh, our lab at Baylor, uh, along with others in the consortium, uh, composed uh, what we call the data management and resource repository. So as part of the ERCC, we're charged with creating the informatics and data resources to manage and hold this data and, and disperse this data so people can, uh, within the consortium, but also outside the consortium, make use of it. So the Atlas is a repository, essentially a catalog of XNR species uh, uh, with a good focus on healthy uh, body fluids, uh, just because it had not been, um, you know, really studied before. So it established a baseline. But it was also a good focus on various uh, disease states. So we created that XRNA Atlas. So along with that, we also developed different computational tools. Uh, so these are integrated within the Atlas. So one could go to the Atlas, identify data sets or data files of interest, uh, do searches, and then download that data or submit it into these various tools. And a number of those tools will be uh, covered by others um, during the course of this workshop. So uh, this has been covered. So basically, as the data is being generated, uh, where does this go? So we created the atlas. Uh, what this shows, uh, and again, uh, Roger covered some uh, key points. I'm going to add a few here. So that first row, you see the ERCC1 uh, was focused uh, on XRNA profile and bulk biofluids. Uh, we launched the atlas in 2016. So the profile has been complete uh, using RNA-seq and qPCR, about 10,000 samples. Uh, so this is a currently uh, undergoing analysis, what we're calling the capstone uh, analysis. It should be finished uh, or be submitted probably by the end of this year. Uh, about halfway through, though, we did uh, submit an analysis, which helped identify various uh, uh, cargos and cargo types. Um, and that was uh, an SL paper submitted in uh, 2019 as part of the consortium uh, bullets of papers. So one of the key take homes, though, of that stage one is that uh, we learned a lot of interesting biology. But there's a lot of, a uh, lot to be, uh, uh, we recognize that the tools that are uh, being used really weren't sufficient to address all the questions that we wanted to ask. So uh, because of the unique uh, features of exosomes and other carriers and the uh, xRNAs themselves, uh, they need to be uh, focused on technology development. So stage two uh, launched with a focus on developing those technologies. Uh, and, and so, um, not just on exosomes, but also other uh, types of carriers. So uh, the ribonuclein protein particles, lipoprotein particles, and, and the like. Um, so the focus, again, is in large part RNA-seq, but there's a very rich set of different uh, other types of data uh, to help uh, characterize, identify uh, both the EVs down to the single EV level, but EV subsets and different carriers and, and their cargo. Uh, over the next couple of years, we should add about another 20,000 uh, uh, samples to the atlas. Uh, and this is being described in a perspective paper, which is in preparation. And this will uh, summarize the goals and objectives of stage two ERCC uh, and also uh, the technologies that are being evaluated. Uh, what I have down at the bottom is just a snapshot. If you look at, uh, you know, the, uh, the nuance of the variations between the, the main methods, there are probably about 10 or 15 different technologies being evaluated, small and, all, small and long RNA-seq, uh, EV flow cytometry, think of it as an adaptation of uh, traditional cell flow cytometry, uh, but there's quite a bit of uh, technology development needs to take place because of the, the nature of EVs. Uh, different proteomics technology, uh, electrophoretic methods, uh, even glycan arrays, et cetera. So a very rich set of technologies. Uh, we're coming up on the end of year two this summer, and the way the stage two is set up is the first couple of years are really a proof of concept. 
So there's new technologies. Uh, groups are pushing the limits and developing new methods. And uh, so it's a proof of concept. Then after the second year, uh, those technologies that look most promising uh, go on and, and the next two years of, the, of stage two are focused on polishing or scaling up or what have you, uh, those, those methods. So, and our roles are the DMRR is to, to provide the informatics resources to accommodate new types of data. This is a, a summary of the uh, biophysics were profiled in stage one, so plasma, serum, urine, et cetera. Uh, again, across uh, various uh, physiological states with a, a good focus on healthy to establish a baseline. The stage one also had a number of uh, disease uh, experts, uh, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, kidneys, uh, MS, et cetera. Uh, a number of papers are published looking at uh, identifying candidate markers uh, for xRNAs. This is a snapshot of the atlas, so one can go there and do queries on various uh, uh, fields, so condition or biofluid. Uh, so it's not just a data repository, there's also integrated tools. Uh, Alex and Emily will cover uh, a number of those or some of those in the, uh, over the course of the workshop. Uh, Ross spent a little time talking about the RNA isolation methods, which again, there's a lot of work done on that, and also one can query on that. As you might, as you might expect, uh, based on the characteristics of the xRNA or the biofluid, certain kits work uh, better or worse for uh, for different uh, states. Uh, about a thousand users uh, per quarter access the atlas, and it's been uh, accessed by researchers from over 40 countries and 40 U.S. institutions. And uh, this use and the feedback has helped us improve the resource. This slide shows that we have actually spent quite a bit of time uh, just uh, defining the ATLAS uh, data model. Uh, it's very important uh, both to the consortium and to us to make the data readily available, uh, not just within the consortium, but to the broader community. So I think we have over 1,500 metadata fields uh, defined, so one can do uh, searches on a, ver a variety of different fields and do sorts, et cetera, download the data or select that data and submit it uh, to various tools. So this is a popular figure, so it's already been shown a couple of times, so uh, I won't go through this because uh, Rob and Juan Pablo have covered this. Uh, one additional point I want to make, though, is that this has been uh, is very important that all the data submitted to the Atlas uh, went through XSERP. So we have a very uniformly processed data set within the Atlas. So that's an important contribution, and uh, Joe will talk about this in detail uh, shortly. This is shows uh, a couple of the, the workflows that make use of XSERP. On the top, uh, again, there's a, the Atlas is a public resource, so whether it's starting with small RNA-seq or qPCR, you go through the FTV data submission. You see that uh, the data goes through XSERP, and after an uh, embargo period becomes uh, available in, into the Atlas, anyone can access it. Uh, down below is uh, there's another option if uh, people want to submit uh, data using our Jimbery platform at Baylor. Uh, it goes through that process. You have access to excerpts. You can uh, modify the settings and, and play around with uh, various, uh, uh, you know, parameters there to uh, with your own data. And you can keep the data private, or you can share it with a collaborator. So that option is available. This isn't described in the, the Marilla all paper. So it's not like we have a, a good number of experimentalists on, on the on the uh, call. So I'll just uh, kind of summarize this. You may not be familiar with fairness, what that means, uh, but it's really central to, to what we're trying to do with the Atlas and other resources. So fairness is a, a stance for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So we're probably all familiar with uh, going to uh, a repository or finding data, and then you, you're not sure what to do with it. It's kind of like uh, if you're reading a manuscript and the, the materials and methods are incomplete, uh, the challenge to, to you know, recreate the experiment. So uh, these are principles that have been uh, out there for a few years now. Uh, so number one is can you find the data set? You know, is it findable by humans? And, and, and computers, so is it machine readable? Um, is it accessible, interoperable? Is it making use of standard vocabularies, uh, ontologies, et cetera? And ultimately, the goal is to make the data reusable. So um, again, uh, can it be used in other, with other applications, other workflows, and other contexts? So this is a, a very important concept for, uh, for the field. Um, so it's important that we make the Atlas data fair, um, not just for the consortium, but outside the consortium. What's shown here is uh, a couple of examples where the Atlas is uh, registered in these indexing sites, so fairsharing.org or Google Dataset Search. For example, if you go to those sites and you, and you, you can uh, type in various uh, metadata, you can type in XRNA Atlas or ERCC or some other types of data, and you'll see that the, the data set will come up. So that's an example of just being findable. So this is an emphasis uh, for us. 
we uh, very we take a very API centric approach so that data is not available just through the UI but also programmatically, and we follow uh, open API standards. Uh, so again, as, a, as the Atlas is kind of a central resource with the tools and data, I'm putting in a few plugs for upcoming speakers here. So Justin will talk about visualization tools. Uh, within the Atlas, we have XRNA Expression Explorer. You can go in and select a, a data sets. I won't go through this because that will be covered here. Um, various ways to visualize the data. Uh, and so this is something that we uh, is ongoing and we're, we're always adding features. Uh, now, Roger touched on this. So uh, actually, before I, I mention this, uh, so the XNRI Atlas right now contains RNA-seq and qPCR data. Uh, we want to expand it uh, to other data uh, types, which we'll be doing for stage two as those uh, technologies uh, you know, continue along development. One that we are uh, adding now is uh, EV flow cytometry data. So uh, that will be another data type within the, within the Atlas. Uh, so the Common Fund has been funding uh, various consortia and large scale projects for a number of years. The ERCC is one of them, uh, but these data sets really don't talk to each other. And so the CFDE kicked off last fall, and our, our lab at Baylor is part of this. The goal of the CFDE is to create a function ecosystem that makes all the Common Fund data more impactful for the, the broader community. So. Uh, right now, one cannot go in and query across certain uh, data types. So we want to be able to query across the different common fund data sets, which is a very rich data set, uh, and also provide tools uh, for researchers, not just uh, from each individual consortium, but for the community, and then train uh, researchers how to use those tools. So it's a, it's a pretty significant e effort. It's a three-year project just kicked off last fall. So where are we today? Uh, well, you can see uh, on the right uh, at the top, XRNA is one of the nine common fund programs or part of the CFDE. Um, some of you may be part of these other projects or are using their data. Uh, it's way beyond the, the scope of today, but this is, a, uh, again, very diverse and rich data set. So there's uh, it's not just transcriptomic, but there's a variant data, uh, proteomic data, metabolomic data, drug interaction. So a very rich data set. So being able to query across these type of uh, data sets, I think uh, one can envision a number of use cases or you're probably only limited by your imagination. So uh, the idea is to combine uh, all these different data sets and be able to query across them. So I think it's a very exciting uh, project and I think will open up a, a variety of different use cases and uh, queries that one could uh, explore uh, all kinds of different biology. So it's early stages, but uh, it's uh, moving along rather nicely. What I showed here is uh, we just completed our, our first uh, data submission for ERCC into the CFDE data portal. So it was 39 projects from the ERCC, uh, almost 8,000 bio samples. And so this is kind of uh, uh, taking us down that stage of getting the data in. So there's a lot of engineering that kind of goes in behind the scenes, uh, may not be visible to the end user, but a lot of work in terms of developing the data model and, and having all these uh, uh, data sets talk to each other. So uh, we kind of stitch together these data silos, so to speak. So that was a, a quick summary, uh, but uh, the Atlas is a public repository, the ERCC. Uh, the data there from multiple biofluids across the various biological states. Um, it's been published. We have another publication coming up. Um, oh, I think there, through the end of stage two, we will add another 20,000 uh, samples, give or take. Again, even though the focus may be on RNA-seq and then be just additional qPCR, to be a new data type. So I think that will uh, enrich the data set, also uh, lead to generation and development of some additional type of tools. So it's a, it's a resource that not just contains the data, but has integrated tools. Uh, we encourage you to take a look and, and use that for your studies. And then looking beyond the ERCC, uh, we see uh, with the CFDE, there's an opportunity to have the ERCC data become uh, you know, more usable in terms of uh, integrating that with proteomic data and variant data and other types of uh, data and, uh, and, you know, and, and to enable uh, a variety of different use cases. Uh, I kind of, I really summarized probably seven years or eight years of work. Uh, it was a major effort by a lot of uh, uh, grad students, software engineers, postdocs, and then uh, data contributors. So. Uh, the DMRR is composed of uh, Baylor, Yale, uh, PNRI, UCSD, and Scripps. And, uh, so that was a, a team effort to make this happen and develop the tools, which is ongoing as part of stage two. Uh, and then the data contributors uh, who, who made a lot of effort to uh, 
to generate that data. And then stage two data generation continues. It was uh, a little bit of a challenge with the COVID, but uh, things are progressing nicely. So uh, I will stop there and happy to take questions or, or uh, you know, I guess we can defer questions to the uh, end of the session.